What's up guys? So I'm gonna try to make some progress on this rod today. So um, this is what you end up with. This big huge wad of tape on either side. And if you look, you can just see, it's kind of hard to see all the different layers, but there's a lot of layers going on. And uh, also, if you look right here, where the thread is, you know, it starts to, as you're terminating off of this piece of blank over this winding check, transition up to the grip here, um, you know, it starts to become distorted because everything is starting to bunch up. And so, like if you look, for example, over here, let me take, I actually need to cut all this tape off, but right quick, let me just pull this one. So if you look right here at this one, from the side view, you can see how it's not sitting flat. It's bumped way up. And actually it was, it was, it was angled up so high that it was where it was flushed the blank. It was way back here. So I took a piece of tape and put it right here over this thing and like smash this down to like push this down because what's going to have to happen. And it's what I'm going to do right now is, um, a portion of this all right here is gonna get cut off. Like let's say approximately right here, it's gonna get cut off. And right here, it's gonna get cut off. And you're gonna be exposed blank back here. And, and Mary came out with Duncan. Um, it's gonna be exposed blank. And then I'm gonna go back in with some of this, um, some of this, uh, ice blue thread to like finish off where it's unwrapped. So I'm gonna do that right now. And you know, this is one of those things where I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, but you just kind of have to go for it and get all this off of here. And uh, that wanted to peel up a little bit. So actually, um, what did I do with my, so I'm gonna take my little, my little Fiskars and cut. So this is an interesting part right here because it's being a little bit destructive of the wraps. But like I said, that stuff's all got to come off. So there's really no rhyme or reason to this process. You're just trying to get all this off of here to expose, to expose just to be able to kind of work at this process. So you see it's like a big old chunk of tape. It is leaving some tape residue on my grip, but um, that's not a big deal because I'll be able to get most of that off with some um, acetone. So that's not a problem. That's actually was a good thing because I really needed to keep, I really needed to keep everything like in place and not allow anything to move on me, which might've happened if I used blue tape. So um, this process, as far as viewing, may not really be very, interesting or fun to watch but um, this just needs to be done I guarantee you there's not a video on YouTube of anybody doing this there's um surprisingly not very many videos on YouTube of rod building there just aren't I've looked and 
guarantee you there's no video of anyone dealing with the process of cutting this crap off. I could just go ram and just, but I don't wanna um, accidentally cut my grip under here. That's why I'm kind of being a little bit more careful. I guess I can just kind of, let's see here. Um, how do I wanna do this? Yeah, so I'm just basically being really careful not to cut my grip. Because if I score the grip with the razor blade, it's just gonna mess up my grip and I can't really recover from that. You know, this x flock shrink tubing, the way it works is when you heat it up, is it, um, it collapses. Well, where it collapses down here over the edge of your grip, it kind of goes down like that. And then you take your winding check and you kind of butt it up. And then you put it in place. I use little pieces of Hypalon or EVA foam that I use as a clamp to keep it there while it's curing, while the epoxy's curing. But, um, you know, you can't really go back in after the fact and fix that. Or as I would say, like recover from that problem. You could, but you wouldn't be able to have it tucking underneath of that winding check like that. So, it's coming off okay. It's just a mess. Um, I'll hit that with a rag with some acetone and it'll pull all that off. There's it's the indentations right in there from all the pressure from that the tensile strength of the uh, of the thread sticking down for what's well, basically been like three days now. So I'm hoping that um, I think that foam grip material under there will relax and bounce back. It might take a couple days, but that's fine. And if it doesn't, then, you know, that'll be a learning lesson. And, you know, again, it's my rod, so. And actually what I should have done now that I thought about it after the fact was I should have put some masking tape right here and just built up some masking tape real thick. Not real thick, but you know, four or five passes and then started laying my tape down on top of that. That might've helped with not having as much compression on there. All right, so that's basically all mostly off there. Um, so that's kind of, you know, like I said, there's, there's no Here's how you remove this. You just have to kind of get after it and just kind of get it done and be careful that you don't cut your grip digging into that too much. If this was just exposed blank under here, instead of this grip, I just would have went, just cut a line and just dug it off of there, but just trying to be careful with this grip. And there's one little piece here. I'll just lift that up. And just for the heck of it, even though it's not really important that I do this now, but since you're watching and you know, you might want to see how that's gonna clean up. Use a little bit of acetone really quick here. And we'll just see how that does. A little bit of grip sticking here.
this um, acetone chemical is pretty strong stuff. Actually, I want to be careful not to mess up my grips with it. You know, it can definitely chew through this stuff at some point if you go too hard. I'm going pretty hard on it and pretty firm, but not really, nothing too major. I'll probably end up cleaning that up a little bit more a little bit later, but eh, I mean, it's mostly it. Yeah, so that's like mostly cleaned up. And actually that grip kind of looks like it's already rebounding a little bit. So, and then I'll show you what I got here. This big old thing full of all this crap. Masking tape. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about this whole thing, but I can tell you one thing is that once we get this thing cut off right here and get some new thread packed in here on the sides and this thing just kind of really pops because it's real centered and get all this crap, all this masking tape off of here and get it finished, it's going to look like way different and better. So, let's see here, how do I want to tackle this? Um, I don't think I could really get, actually, yeah, I can get those under there. So some of this is actually sticking down to this winding check because this um, two-part epoxy like penetrated through the threads here and like traveled its way up and there's a little bit. So I'll probably end up using like a razor blade to kind of knock some of that off of there. Again, just being careful to not damage my grip. If I had to fix a grip, this rear grip back here, like if I could probably have a better chance of doing something with that because it's the back of the rod. If I had to try to go in and fix this grip, it's kind of more in the middle. It would probably be a little bit more difficult. This is not the glamorous part of a rod build. <laughs> Look at how thick this is right here. You can see that. Yeah. All right. I think I'm gonna. So what it's doing is um, 
that thread is like acting like rebar on this tape. There we go. That was mostly it. Uh, mostly gone. I was just getting ready to start my Monday here. Well, actually, it started earlier, but to kind of get started with the work component of the day with my real estate job or business, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I didn't do anything on this rod yesterday on Sunday. It was just a really late night on Saturday night. And then Sunday was just... I was really tired when I woke up and just didn't really want to tackle this. And today, I was like, all right, let's just, let's just sit down and start actually doing it because there's no way to fake this. You just have to, you just gotta do it and figure it out as you go. This one is a little bit more sauced up with this residual um, the residue from the uh, masking tape. super stained with grease and everything else. I probably shouldn't even be using this towel on this rod, but I'm trying to be careful not to touch the rod onto the towel and get any transfer. And uh, this was just one I had handy. cleaning up pretty good. So this two-part epoxy, I'm sorry, this grip, underneath the grip, I have um, a product that was a foam tape, a one inch wide roll of tape. And I mentioned earlier that I usually use cork tape, which is a more rigid, uh, hard surface. Still a lot of elasticity and and it definitely gives, but this stuff's a little bit softer. And then um, these grips have to be glued down on top of that because even though they're compressed, I mean, they definitely would, would spin on the grip if you didn't have them glued down. And uh, if you're a new rod builder, make sure you always, if you're gonna ever add this um, X-Flock shrink tubing material over the top of any grips, you always wanna put some kind of a glue down you know, um, a two-part epoxy, at minimum a contact cement, just because, and, and get good coverage on it, because um, these will like, if you hold onto this and spin the rod, the grip will, even if it's trying to resist it, and it's trying not to do it, it will do it. And under the pressure of especially like a really big fish, like a tuna or something, it'll, it'll slip. And uh, 
basically needs to get cut off and redone if you do that. And uh, if you're the angler fighting the fish and that happens, then you have to call the builder back and say, hey, my rod messed up when I was fishing it, then they're not happy and you can kind of get some egg on your face and you don't want that. So, I mean, and I've done stuff where, you know, when I didn't know what I was doing early on to rod building like 20 years ago or whatever, I made a couple mistakes like that that were a little bit catastrophic. I, uh, <laughs> one time I, one time I epoxy, instead of putting epoxy on a, like an Aftco reel seat on a tuna stick, when I just was clueless and didn't know better because I was brand new, I actually used Stay Bond, which pretty much is the equivalent of contact cement. And I put contact cement on the, and just the pressure of turning the handle and just with a big fish pulling on it and everything, just the reel seat was just like, just came right over. It was like, you, you're not going to get enough strength out of a, uh, contact cement to hold a real seat. You need a two-part epoxy to bond that stuff where it's just integrated into the blanket and it will never move. And once you get good at it and you get the confidence, you, you should be able to tell your client that real seat will not move. And, uh, and that's what you need. Okay, I'm gonna, since I'm splicing, I'm just gonna stop this and restart.